Hey, I'm Grump. I'm not so Grump. And we're the Game Grumps. And welcome back to another development look video. In the last part, I worked on the swimming movement system, and in this part, I'm working on the wall running system and wall momentum system. I guess they're the same thing. Were I better at editing, I would probably add a compilation at this point of the video of all the times in previous devlogs where I have made some wall movement system, because uh, I keep looping back to this idea of running on walls. I, uh, I really like walls, I guess. The first thing I did this week is change the water swimming animations. And by that I mean I made it so that the water swimming animation was just the breaststroke animation. And then I made one variation of this, but it's pretty much just the breaststroke animation. The reason for this is I thought the underwater swimming didn't look as realistic to actual swimming. And I think the breaststroke animation just looks better. I, I like it a lot more. I only include this section to show off how this animation looks now. Wow, it sure looks pretty, don't it? Sure looks good. Onto the actual devlog, I added wall running this week. Again. Now, if you're curious why I added wall running, mm, I just like wall running. But this will be another development log where I just talk extensively about one feature for 32 minutes, so uh, strap in! The first thing I did was add a collision check to make sure that the player is actually against a wall. This works in a similar way to the ledge grab function, where the player casts a overlap sphere in front of them, very, um, basically, to check if there is a wall there, because we don't need to run an advanced checking script for collision if we can just check if there is a wall there with a basic script, and then if there isn't, we just don't need to run the rest of the script. If there is a wall there, we will then check from the top of the player, the center of the player, and the base of the player for the wall point information. This is to get essentially the average point of the wall and the average point of the wall's normals. You know the drill from here. We check the wall's information and we feed it back to the player script. From here, we check if the wall has a suitable angle to run on. Um, this essentially means the diagonal sloping of the wall. If the wall is not steep enough or is an odd upwardsy angle, um, making the gesture of my arm for the diagonal lean of the wall, um, but you can't see that. If the wall is too steep or not steep enough, we won't well run it on it. If it has too much of a differential angle from our current facing angle, which I guess technically wouldn't happen anyway because the wall check doesn't check if we're not pressing the right direction. Um, forget I said that last part. And some other features as to check if we can wall run on this point. If we can, we'll check if the player can be placed on this point. This is more of a check for um, weird buggy collision, and more of a check that is run on the actual wall running movement scripting, because if we're standing on a wall, or if we're in the air and we collide with a wall, um, there's probably not going to be any collision on the wall because we have just hit it with our body, and we're already on the wall, proving that there is nothing there. But we run the collision check just in case. If there is no collision, we will then stick onto the wall surface. Oh, will we? We actually won't. We'll check if there is a vertical wall to wall run or a horizontal wall to wall run. There is two kinds of wall running functions that I made, one for running up a wall, one for running across a wall. Is this just a ripoff of Monster Hunter Rise's wall running system? Absolutely. Only worse. It's worse because I haven't added the fun grappling hook yet. We will then check if we should wall run vertically up the wall or wall run wall run horizontally across the wall. You know, as someone who pronounces their R's like W's, I sure I'm having a hard time pronouncing all of these walls. Words. The way we check if we are going to run up the wall or across the wall is through a few different functions. The first being if we are on the ground, we are automatically going to be running up the wall because the only way we can wall run from the ground is by running straight into a wall. At this point, we're not going to be going horizontally across the wall because our momentum is straight at the wall surface because we ran straight into it. So, therefore, we run up the wall. The reason we can't run horizontally across the wall 
when on the ground is because this would have to function as we are running on the ground next to a wall, but this would trigger us accidentally too many times if we are just running close to a wall when on the ground, so we can only run up a wall when on the ground, and only when we run straight into the wall surface. However, running up walls is primarily used for in-air functions, so we need to check these functions for when we are in the air and we hit a wall. When we hit the wall, we'll check our movement angle based on the wall surface. If our movement angle is a hash a degree based on the wall's normal direction, we will be essentially running against it. Um, this is basically like we were running parallel to the wall, and then we jumped into the air, and then we checked the wall surface next to us to make sure we could wall run on it. We could, and then we checked to see that we were running parallel to the wall, or our angle was harsh enough that we weren't facing the wall, so we trigger into a horizontal wall run. Essentially, if you are running not towards the wall, you will run across it. Once we have decided that we are running horizontally on the wall, we now need to check if we are going to run left or right on the wall. This is again, very simple. All we do is check the angle direction towards the left of the wall's direction, and then we check the angle of our facing direction based on the right direction of the wall. If we are closer to the left direction, we will run left. If we are closer to the right direction, we will run right. And this is pretty much the simplest part of the scripting of the wall run. It's just getting the logic of what our direction should be based on a few angles, based on the normal direction of the wall and our momentum. If you have seen a few of my previous devlogs, you may note that some of my movement scripting is now getting excessively complicated, and this isn't a bad thing as far as design goes, because I like things to be excessively complicated, but the issue is in the priority of the coding. For example, when searching for ledges and walls to run up, when do we check if we should wall run, and when do we check if we should grab onto a ledge, and when do we check if we should do the third option that I haven't coded yet. Um, the issue is, I now need to add priority systems for each of these movement systems if two of them could simultaneously be triggered. A way to think of this is that certain actions in the game or certain stimuli in the game will trigger different states for the player. For example, interacting with water will trigger swimming states, interacting with walls will trigger wall running and ledge states. The issue is that wall interactions will trigger into two different states, so I need to add a priority for which one we should trigger into. Luckily, this is really easy! All I have to do is add different setups for different situations, and then depending on these situations, we will trigger into different states. The key example is when we trigger into a ledge hang, or if we trigger into a vault, those are influenced by the height of the ledge above us. So I just do a similar thing with the wall run. We take the information of the wall and the information of the ledge, we put it all together, and we see which state we should come out in. So I will just go over every single uh, combination of stimuli the player could be um, influenced by to send them into a different state, and the current states that they could be in to go into those states. And why these each make sense, I guess. I think that was my note. So, if we are on the ground and we hit a wall, our priority will be to check for a ledge. If there is a ledge we can hang on from this point, or vault over from this point, that is logically what we should be defaulting to movement-wise. The reason we don't default to a wall run upwards is if we're at a ledge on the ground, the wall is not going to be long enough to work. If there is no ledge or vault to hit onto, then we should now default into the wall running state. So, if there isn't a ledge, we will then try to run up this wall instead, because it is tall enough to not have a ledge on top of it. If we are in the air, we can either be moving upwards or moving downwards with our gravity momentum. This movement is used as our priority. If we are moving upwards, we won't check for any ledges. Except for we will. I lied to you. We will check if there is ledges, but we won't actually grab onto any of these ledges. This is an information check we will use for later. The reason we don't grab onto any of these ledges is because we are moving upwards in midair, so therefore we won't need to grab onto any of these ledges because we will logically m probably overshoot these ledges. It is just an information check we need for later. And by later, I mean right now. We will, we will, we will, we will, we will, we will check 
in midair is we will check if there is any walls to run on or run against. This is because you can only wall run when in the positive um, section of upwards movements because we have to carry on our upward momentum to run along the walls. If we are going downwards, we can't go into a wall run because we are falling downwards. So that momentum wise would be we're traveling downwards and then we run up a wall with some momentum we got from nowhere. So when going upwards in gravity, we will prioritize wall running. However, if we have hit a ledge, we won't wall run instead. Even if we collide with a wall, this is because if we have hit a ledge, we know this is logically the top of this wall. So there is no use wall running up it because it is already something we're probably going to overshoot with our momentum anyway. Finally, we have moving downwards. This is pretty easy. We check for ledges like usual. Since we can't wall run when going downwards in gravity, all we need to do is check if there's a ledge. If there is a ledge, we grab onto it like always. Just a classic ledge grab. Just a good old ledge grab. Just a classic good old days ledge grab. Somehow in my notes for this week of things that I did, I forget to include the actual wall running system. As in how it moves. Let's talk about the wall running system. So, wall runs themselves are separated into two different systems. There is the X wall run and the Y wall run. This is essentially moving along the wall horizontally and moving along, along, along the wall vertically. To confuse the points even more, the substate wall run vertical and wall run horizontal both use a combination of these vertical and horizontal movements. The only difference being that wall running vertically will not use any horizontal movements and wall running horizontally will use a set dampening for the wall running vertical movements with its movements. Does this make sense? Does any of this make sense? Absolutely not. Let's talk about the wall running vertically first because it's the easiest to explain. What we do is we have two values. We have our upwards vertical amount. We have our downwards vertical amount. We have our upwards vertical time. We have our downwards vertical time. This is how much up we're going to go, how down we're going to go after this point, how long we are going to take to get to this apex of our upwards movements, and how long we are going to take to get to the downwards apex, the apex of our movements. We will then use a modified smooth lap to go from our default wall running momentum setup time being zero to our wall running upwards movement time. So this is, we check for the time it takes to get to this point. Once we are at this point, we will reach the top value of our wall running upwards momentum. And um, it will have a, have like a curve to, to how, how quickly it gets to this point, like a, like a graph curve, like a, um, like a, like a sine curve or something like that. After we have reached this point, we will use a different sine curve lerp to reach to our downward point. Um, the first is being a one where it slowly reaches to the to the apex of our of our upward momentum um, amount, and then it reaches it very quickly. And then the second one is a um, a slow start and then a quick descent into the downwards amount of our of our um, lerp amount. Actually, that's a lie. The upwards lerp reaches it quickly, the downwards lerp reaches it slowly. Um, they're essentially opposite curves of a graph. These are fed into our movement system on the wall, and we will just tell how much upwards and downwards we move with each step. If our current wall run has any horizontal movements to it, we will do a similar system where we will just build speed as we normally do with our lerp speed function. I have this function for lerping speed. Have we mentioned that? It has a couple modifiers, how much you want your speed to be, your current inputs, your acceleration, etc, etc. We will build speed with this function, and we will move either left or right based on our wall's um, initial movement direction, based on our current speed. We will then feed this into our wall run movement system. Once we have both of these values, we will check at this point in the wall, well, how much we would go in one frame 
this step on the walls position. We will run our similar wall positioning and wall logic scripting check. We will check for all of our previously made informations if, if the wall can be um, contained, if it has a well enough surface to contain us, if the surface is close enough to our current direction, that's where this comes in. If the surface we have hit on the wall is close enough to our current direction um, of our forward direction so we're not turning 180 degrees in one frame, things like that. If our character can be placed on this point of the wall, and other such movement functions. If all of these functions return true and we can move to this point in the wall, we will then move to this point in the wall. If we can't, we will be falling off the wall. This essentially just tilts our character to our forward direction, we tilt into an in air function, and we are maintaining our current momentum from the wall and the wall's gravity onto our in air function we will be sent into if we can no longer be on the wall. If you want to imagine this in some logical way that may make more sense to you, um, it's essentially like the wall is a rail system on a game and we're just moving along it quickly based on our momentum and if we hit anything we're being thrown off it, maintaining our momentum, what it, rel will be the, 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 the. what it would relatively be in world space in relative to the wall. Relatively. It's relatively pretty good. And that's pretty much how wall running works. It's pretty simple. I will now talk about the more complicated aspects of it. While we are wall running, we will have a couple collision checks. If we are going downwards, we will ah. check for the ground. And if there is the ground, we will walk on it. Obviously. This to avoid our character going through the ground. I shouldn't have to explain this one to you pretty obvious. If we are going upwards, we will check for any collision on the ledges point. Essentially, we are checking if we are on the top of our wall. If we are, we will transition from our wall run state to our ledge state. Ah. As we are going from our wall to our ledge. I have unique animations for all of these. For some reason it took three animations. If we are wall running up, we'll have a unique animation from going upwards to a ledge. If we're going left, we'll have a unique animation. And if we're going right, we'll also have a unique animation. Because for some reason, <coughs> Unity won't let you mirror skeletons that are non-humanoid. <coughs> so I have to manually mirror all of my animations when they are needed. Ah. Which is, uh... Well, actually, it's not a whole lot of work. There's a pretty easy way to do it in Blender. But it makes it unnecessary in the animation controller, and I don't like it. I then worked on the wall running animations. I was actually unsure if I would get these done this week, but I managed to do it just today, Thursday morning. It, um, it actually didn't take too long of a time. It was pretty fun to animate. I'm in a real animation kick lately. In total, there are seven new animations for this system. There is the running left animation. There is the mirrored running right animation. These are pretty good. I like how you run along the wall. They're essentially just running along the wall. Uh, very cartoony, very goofy. You wouldn't be able to do this in the real life. It's not like a Monster Hunter Rise where you can run along the wall, but there is some logic to you actually um, finding grapple points on the wall with your hands and you are kind of crambling around it. Um, man, you just kind of run on it. Don't worry about it too much. I then have three animations for going from the wall to the ledge. As I mentioned earlier, this is if you are running up the wall, you will grab onto the ledge. If you are running left, you will grab onto the ledge. And if you are running right, you will also grab onto the ledge. You know, I uh, can't breathe out of my nose, so whenever I record big long sections like this where I talk for an extended period of time, I'm basically uh, asphyxiating myself because I cannot breathe while I talk because, uh, I don't know if you've noticed, I don't uh, stop when I talk, except for necessarily in sentences, but you can have the most assurance that I don't breathe when that happens, so uh... I'm really good at holding my breath. The wall run to ledge grab systems are animated in a way that they will carry on your momentum as you grab the wall and uh, there's a little bit of, of, of leg wiggle. Finally, I have three animations for running up the wall. 
because I just wanted to animate this. We have one animation for running up the wall slowly. This is a quick crawling up the wall. You are actually using grapple points in the wall to organically move up its surface. The second being a transitional animation from this to our wall run upwards. This is like a combination between running up a wall and grappling up a wall. I actually quite like how this one looks. It's uh, pretty good. Pretty proud of myself on this one. The final one is a wall run upwards. This is just a straight up you are running up the wall surface. Oh I lied, I have more animations. We then have two animations for going down the wall, and by animation, I mean pose animations. The first one being the wall fall um, start. This is just, we are sliding down the wall now. And then the wall fall slide down ending. This is, we are, we've got more momentum behind our character. These animations are pretty good, but they're just poses. Um, overall, I like how these all look. End of section. I also made this crawling animation for no reason. Uh, I just like it. I just think it looks kind of cool. I haven't really animated crawling animations too much. I've animated a couple of them in past dev looks, but I didn't like how they looked. Um, I think this one looks pretty cool. It was fun to do. I recommend it if you want to do some animating. Maybe do a crawl, perhaps. I just wanted to just show you, because I'm proud of it. Finally, I added the wall jumping system. This one was pretty easy. If you're on the wall going horizontally, we will jump in the direction of our movements, and also a little bit up, and also a little bit away from the wall surface angle. Just a little bit. Just a little bit. If we are wall running upwards, we will jump further upwards and also away from the wall. I think we'll also snap our rotation value to be the opposite of the wall, so we are jumping away from it. These are very simple animations, it's essentially just a pushing off the wall. Um, I didn't want anything excessively complicated, like a Monster Hunter Rise has a complicated jumping off the wall animation, but theirs has a lot more um, weight to it, and you kind of pause before it happens. I may add something like that to my game in the future, where there is a pause before you wall jump, but currently it's just a function, and then it happens, and then you get off the wall, and then it ends, and then you're in the air. Full stop. I uh, I like how this how do I like how it works. I hope I, I actually haven't made it yet, so I'm recording this in the past. I tricked you. I actually haven't made this system. Uh, I'm gonna make it right now though. I promise. Phew, that's the end of this devlog. Next week I'm making space movement. Bye!